Behold, three Conan tales of adventure when King Conan hunts a witch who isn't what she seems, Conan finds trouble beneath dark waters, and young Conan learns a lesson about judgment. It's all right here in our review of the Savage Sword of Conan number 5 from Titan Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of the Savage Sword of Conan number 5. This issue is yet another winning entry in the anthology series that gives Conan fans variety in times, locations, and adventures to make your Robert E. Howard loving heart happy. The issue brings a few newcomers onto the title, some of which we've never seen before, and with generally positive results, so make sure to call up your LCS and put this one on your pull list. So let's dig into the issue, starting with the first and largest of the three stories titled King Conan the Ensorcelled Part 1. A middle-aged King Conan of Aquilonia visits the kingdom of Brithunia to broker trade agreements with their foppish, annoying, entitled King Fabiano. To foster kinship between the kings, Fabiano invites Conan on a hunt. But this is no ordinary hunt, as the Brithunians mean to capture a witch charged with destroying crops and slaughtering children. When the hunting party finds the witch cornered in a cave, they find bringing her out is not so easy especially when every man who enters is driven mad. King Conan decides to go in himself after a howling battle. He knocks out the witch and brings her out to stand trial. When King Fabiano orders the witch killed instead of held for trial as he promised Conan, the barbarian king draws his sword with his men to ensure proper justice is done. What follows is a series of adventures where King Conan learns that not all crimes attributed to witches are what they seem, not all witches enjoy killing children, and before all is said and done, King Conan learns that Brithunian justice is more barbaric than any savage, and the arrival of a brutal witch hunter may spell trouble for Conan's act of mercy. Writer Jason Aaron, who is the author of this particular story, is most notable for his work over at Marvel Comics. He takes a stab at Titan's version of Conan this time with the first part of a tale steeped in magic, corruption, and violence. Aaron successfully captures the voice and spirit of an older, wiser Conan without losing one drop of what makes the king a barbarian at heart. Be warned though, Aaron's story takes up the first 50 plus pages of this triple size anthology. So even though it's considered an anthology, it's almost all Jason Aaron's story. Further, this is our first exposure to Jeff Isherwood's talents as an artist and the results look fantastic. Isherwood's inks are clean and dynamic reminiscent of the typical Big Two styles from the post-Bronze Age years. Conan may be a little bit older and grayer here, and I can certainly relate to that, especially in the beard, but he looks no less powerful and intimidating. The next short in the anthology is called Conan, Damn Thing in the Water. Conan and his horse stop by a small pond for a drink of cool water to refresh themselves from a long journey. Suddenly, Conan is ensnared by writhing tentacles from a beast in the water's murky depths. Conan has no choice but to fight for his life before he's drowned or worse. Regular Conan writer Jim Zub's super quick, almost wordless short story amazingly captures everything you want and love in a Conan story. You get the setup, conflict, resolution, and a teeny bit of wit to boot. It's not jokey, but there's a little, little bit of something at the end that's going to put a slight smile on your face. It's amazing how well a two-page short from Zub holds up against Aaron's 50-plus page adventure with equal, you might even argue a little bit better, entertainment value. And to put a cherry on top of that fantastic Sunday, as always, Robert De La Torre's moody, thick, heavily shadowed Bronze Age art captures the spirit of Conan like nobody else. We are so happy to have De La Torre on the main Conan title when uh, he's shifting on and off with uh, Doug Braithwaite, and we hope Titan keeps him on as long as possible. The next and last short story in this anthology is entitled Conan Forged. Young Conan struggles to learn the intricacies of blacksmithing from his father's direction. His father is stern, but he's fair, and Conan is given a chance to redeem himself when his father requests he forge a simple bracelet. While the town is visited by traveling dancers and their entourage, who offers strong drinks and many pleasures, Conan obeys his father's wishes to forge a bracelet and earn his father's respect. As Conan works into the early hours, he sees the visiting entertainers stealing the village's livestock while the villagers are passed out from the drug-laced wine, prompting Conan to put his meager skills in forging steel to good use. For this last short story in the anthology, 
Michael Koch's tale of young Conan's early teachings hits the nail on the head, and we mean that literally because nails have a part to play in this particular story, especially when Conan learns not to jump to conclusions and to act quickly when his suspicions prove correct. Unfortunately, probably the one downside of this entire issue, Dan Parsons' art is just serviceable at best, and it doesn't even come close to matching the power, detail, and pop of both Isherwood and De La Torre. It's okay art, but not quite up to their level. And that's the issue, but let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture of where this title is going next. According to Titan's solicit information, The Savage Sword of Conan No. 5 is the penultimate issue in a six-series run. As of this writing, there are no issues planned past issue number 6, which is next month in November. Which, to be honest, is a disappointment for us. If we receive word of the series continuing after November 2024, we will let you know. Final thoughts, what do we think about The Savage Sword of Conan No. 5? It delivers three entertaining tales of Conan's adventures as he battles witches, sea monsters, and deadly thieves. Jason Aaron's tale of woe takes up the lion's share of the issue for a double-sized adventure that looks as great as it reads, and the shorter stories, both from Jim Zub and Michael Cove, are excellent. Therefore, The Savage Sword of Conan earns a 9.2 out of 10. Titan has yet to put out a bad comic since they acquired the license, and I sincerely hope Savage Sword continues after November. But what do you think? Are you enjoying what Titan is doing with Conan? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below if you agree that you want to see more black and white anthology stories just like this one. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support, of course, is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.